Hi everyone, and welcome to the second video of making this medieval inspired princess gown. So in the last video, I went through how the corset was constructed. So the corset is essentially helping the gown lie flat over the body and prevent puckering. Now in this video, I will explain how we made the main dress, which is attached to the corset to ensure the gown does not slip off down the shoulders. Starting with the pattern, for this project we used Butterick 4571 as a base and then made modifications as we saw necessary. Just an update on what's been done so far. Uh, we've used this pattern here, which is Butterick B4571, and cut out the lining pieces. And um, I only had five meters of this fabric, so I've done my best to try and make the skirts as wide as I possibly can. Um, but some of the skirt pieces are actually narrower. And what we did was we cut out um, a front, front panel piece so this is cut on the fold and then a side front panel piece and the back panel. And when we cut these pieces out, we, um, didn't, we didn't cut out the bodice and skirt pieces separately. Instead, we just um, lined them up on the fabric and then cut them out all as one panel. And the other piece I've got is the upper sleeve and it's going to be an off-the-shoulder dress but I've never actually made an off-the-shoulder dress and I'm not very good with sleeves either so I've cut out the full sleeve piece but I will probably be changing this um, later on so it will be off the shoulder and I've also extended the sleeve by about four inches since my upper arm is quite long and um, yeah now we're going to cut out these exact same pieces out of the outer layer fabric which is the crushed velvet and um, I'll be laying these pieces straight on top of that fabric um, so we get the pattern pieces all correct. I haven't made a mock-up of this but I'm hoping that the pattern that we're using, this one here, has a pretty good fitting and I've also like lined up my corset pattern with the bodice pieces to try and make sure that they align. Um, so we'll see how we go and hopefully this all works out. Here we have the front piece and we've also got the side front piece next to it and we've lined it up at the notches and we're going to sew these pieces together all the way down, all the way down the skirt and we're going to continue this process for all of the lining panel pieces and then the exact same thing for the velvet pieces. So that's one panel done and now moving on to the next one. I think we're matching the other side front. Yeah, so we've got one side front attached to the front piece and now we're attaching the other side front.
the clips were getting way too repetitive, so here's the all of the lining panels sewn together, except for the back ones. And now I'm clipping them at the waist, so I've just done about two clips per seam, um, or three, two or three, or four. Just wherever there's curves to let the fabric ease a little bit more around those curves. And just trying it on, just to make sure it fits. And that part goes underneath the arm, and that's where the shoulder strap would be, but this is an off the shoulder gown, so I didn't bother. And then repeat all of those steps that you did for the lining to the outer fabric. So match all the panels together, right sides together, and so. Similar to the clip of the lining, we've got the side front attached to the front piece and now we're attaching the other side front. And make sure that you match them from the top and then sew down towards the bottom because you want to make sure that your seams match at the top and then where the hem is you can always just trim off any excess material that you don't need. Now we've got the lining panels all sewn together as well as the outer fabric pieces all sewn together and we're going to attach the outer fabric to the lining fabric um, at the seams, so these seams here, and we're going to press the seam allowance of the lining fabric um, towards the centre front and the seam allowance of the velvet fabric towards the centre back. And we're going to match these pieces up pin them down on the seam lines and then sew them into place. Also another thing, we're only sewing these seams down to the waistline, we're not sewing the seam allowances to one another all the way down the dress. So we've just done a test fitting to make sure that everything matches up and there's no weird puckering going on. And um, we're going to sew in the ditch up to the waistline for each of these seams. So now we have the lining pieces attached to the outer layer fabric and we're going to just trim the outer fabric where the arm side is because it doesn't completely match up and then we'll move on to sewing the sleeve.
moving on to the sleeves, I got, I've got one of the sleeve pieces here and I did cut it out of the lining fabric as well but I don't actually think I'll be using um, lining within the sleeves simply because this already has some stretch to it and it's already quite comfortable around the arm by itself and I'm going to turn them right sides together and sew along here and same with the other sleeve. So I've sewn my two sleeves and now it's time to attach it to the dress. I've got um, notch markings on the arm size of the dress and I've also got notch markings on the insides of the sleeves. Um, where are they? There's, there's one. There's another one here, yep. And I'm going to try my best to match up those markings with these, and I'm going to sew the right side of the sleeve to the right side of the dress, which is on the back here. And um, I'm not worrying about the top half of the sleeve because this is going to be an off-the-shoulder dress, um, but I did cut out the sleeve with that part um, just because I'm not, I'm not, familiar with off the shoulder style dresses and I'm not very good with sleeves in general either so I thought it'd be safe to just cut out the whole sleeve and then attach it. So that's what I'm going to do now. So now the sleeves have, have been basted on, um, so these are just my rough hand stitches. It's not actually been under the machine yet, but first I want to try this on with the corset underneath, um, just so we can get an idea of how it fits and also how the back should fit since none of the back panels have been sewn together yet. Um, but I'm thinking that the back panels are going to attach to the corset and then so will the top part of this dress here and we'll chop off this part here um, to make it an off the shoulder style dress and then there'll be another piece which will go across the shoulder or like off the shoulder and then towards the center and taper downwards a little bit um, to give it that nice sort of gradual v shape and um, hopefully that part that sits across the top um, will be tight like tight fitting so the dress won't slip off the shoulders um, but that's for another day another problem for another day So we did a test fitting and everything seems to be fitting fine over the corset. So you can see the corsets in here and then we've attached the dress um, along the back and also um, on the front as well. We've just pinned it in place, nothing's been sewn in. And um, along the back panel, um, what I'm doing is hand stitching onto the corset and that's because the, this might be quite difficult to do 
under a sewing machine and also because there is boning in here. So I'm hand stitching and making sure to do uh, strong back stitches and where we get to the boning parts I'm just sewing through the velvet layer on the top and the velvet and cotton drill layers which are above the boning and um, yeah that's how we're going to secure the dress along the back and I might even sew another um, hand stitched seam alongside this one um, just to make this seam even stronger since it will be taking quite a bit of force when the corset is pulled in. I've just finished stitching alongside my hand stitches on the back of the corset where the dress meets the corset and um, so this is my hand stitching and then the next one over is machine stitched. So I've done that on both sides and towards the bottom it tapers um, to meet at the end of the corset and I've yet to figure out what I'm going to do here at the bottom but I'm just hoping that I can um, finish off these and then sew the back panel together and um, a modesty panel will be worn here to cover up behind where the dress doesn't close completely. I've also machine stitched the sleeves on so these are now fully attached. I've not yet um, hemmed the sleeves, I'll leave that to last so we can figure out the length that we need. And on the front, I've also just baste stitched um, across the top and I've also stitched in the ditch just here and here on those two front seams just to hold the rest of the dress up against the top of the corset. Now my next problem to solve is to figure out how I'm going to finish off the edges across the top. Um, and I've folded in the amount of the sleeve head that I need um, to take in to make it off the shoulder. Um, but I've yet to figure out how I'm going to finish the seams off here. I'm thinking of just doing a rolled hem with the velvet fabric and that would lay over the top of the lining fabric like so and then just stitch that in place. Um, because this top part will be covered with another panel of velvet fabric. So. I think what I'm going to just focus on next though is the, um, the back of the skirt where the corset closes at the back and finish off this somehow. So going back to how I was going to close the back of the skirt, um, I've turned these edges in under and I've hand stitched them down so the stitches are quite invisible from the outside. And then I've also pinned this long back seam into place and um, then I'll just sew this down with the sewing machine. And hopefully when the dress is worn um, there should be no weird draping or anything going on here um, since they, they are the exact same length and then they meet. It's, it's basically the same as if you were to put like a zip in the back of a dress except in this case there is no zip. Um, yeah, I'm going to sew this really long seam down the back of the skirt now. 
So I've just finished sewing the back seam. So this seam that goes all the way down and that's got the both the outer fabric and the lining fabric attached within that one seam. And um, here is the opening um, to get into the dress just underneath where the corset finishes with my lovely invisible hand stitching and this ugliness on the inside. And then the back of the corset will close like that. If not, it will be a little bit open, but that's okay. We'll make a dress to fit underneath as a modesty panel. And um, yeah, that's the back of the dress done. And it's looking pretty good so far. We'll just have to add back in the lacing and also fix up whatever's going on here up the top. I don't know why I kept doing that. I guess it felt cool. So this is a picture of my sister marking the hem. I wish I had a dress form that I could do it on, but I don't, so there you go. And now we're draping the off the shoulder thing. So this is not the actual fabric I used for the final shoulder detail thing. Um, it's just the lining fabric which is a poly cotton um, but I did use this to get the general shape that I wanted to cut out of the velvet so that's the weird shape that I wanted it's basically just a rectangle and then I cut that out of the outer fabric And I just pinned along the raw edge, sewed that into a long tube. And then turn the whole thing right side out. 
this took me forever. <laughs> but once you do it, it's all good. <laughs> And then finally, I simply pinned and sewed it to the top of the dress and I hand stitched all of this down. I didn't hand stitch the whole way across, I just, I guess, prick stitched or like back stitched in the places where it would have the most tension. So you can see my pretty awful stitching here under the flash, the flashlight but it does the job and I think that's it. The corset and the dress are both done. And here are some pretty pictures of the dress and we've styled it in two different ways. This one is more medieval fantasy with a necklace used as a tiara and then this one is more of a modern look, so just using a simple statement necklace and then letting the dress speak for itself. Now I just want to mention that this isn't actually the final dress, we've got more coming soon, um, but that will be for another video, so make sure you stick around for that. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any tips or tricks on how you would do this differently, please write them down below in the comments, that would help me out greatly. And until next time, make sure you stay creative. See you in the next video.